So it looks like I've become the miter gauge review guy. Let's see what we have today. This is the Saw Stop Revolution Miter Gauge, and it retails for $449. I got mine for $468.30, including tax from Beaver Industrial Supply, and I'm pretty sure that makes it the most expensive miter gauge on the market. Saw Stop also recently came out with their Scale Miter Gauge as a cheaper alternative at $249, and quite frankly, looks like it borrows a lot of inspiration from Incra. Maybe inspiration is the wrong word here, as it looks like it's just an Incra 1000 HD with a black paint job. I have to imagine that Incra is manufacturing this gauge, or at least it comes from the same OEM. But this review is not about that one, it's about this one. And frankly, I don't want to spend my time reviewing things that don't really tread new ground. This one looks different, a lot of you asked me to take a look at it, and the fact that it's the most expensive on the market has me intrigued. I want to see what is going on there. Plus, my wife loves it when I spend money on tools that I just end up giving away. Hey Mark, what's this charge? Okay, here we go. Let's see what we got here. Uh -huh, manual. Whoop. Now we'll, we'll be picking that up. What? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That is neat. Ah, okay, we'll get to it. All right, let's grab that instruction manual and actually get this thing assembled. Page one, how to use a miter gauge. So one thing I will say, saw stop, they know how to make instructions. Bare parts, assembly parts. Thread the grip into the hoe. I could do that. Okay, do not fully tighten. All right, I won't. First step is to keep this loose so that we could square it up. Use a precision square. Oh, that's easy, I can do that. If there's one thing I've got, it's precision squares. All right, to the table saw. So the way that we adjust this thing in the miter slot is you tighten this little screw down and I think that's pushing on some kind of a rubber washer or something and it applies pressure to the side. It just kind of auto adjusts and if you need to you could put a piece of paper in there to create a little bit of space if it becomes a little bit too tight. But now that I look at this, this is, this is a very similar to what I've seen on the Jessam. The Jessam really operates on the same principle. and. Man, I'm curious. I'm gonna disassemble one of these. All right, so this is really interesting. I mean, it looks like almost the exact same mechanism. So saw stop on the top and the jessam is on the bottom. And the way it works is you've got this little uh, metal washer and a rubber O-ring. So this guy sits inside like so. And then as you put a screw in there and place pressure down, it sort of extends out that O-ring and forces this washer to rub against the miter track. And you pretty much have the same exact setup here on the Jessam. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Ooh, look at that nifty thing. All right, now check this out. This might be one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. So we're gonna loosen up the handle and this dial back here, you might see numbers there, free, one, half, quarter. This is determining how many increments there are between our degrees. So if we're free, that means we can pretty much go anywhere we want. Uh, if we go to one, every click is a whole degree increment. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Then if we go to half, it goes in half increments. So you would have, you know, three, three and a half, four and a half, and then quarter increments. You start at zero. You can hear it getting finer each click. So there's zero. So this would be quarter degree, half, three quarters, one full degree. And then one tenth. Well, that's, you almost don't even feel it but each D10 is there. Now I know there's a fence extension that we loosen up here and I'm kind of just playing before reading the manual because I'm just curious how it works. Ooh, what? This whole top piece moves, which means you don't have to move your stop to a different track or anything like that. It just kind of goes along for the ride. Wow, that's nice. All right, let's take a look at the flip stop. This is quite nice, this uh, double hinge here, use that double hinge to accommodate 
whatever thickness your fence is. That's also looking like a real good thing because this adjustment mechanism means that you don't have to have a specific thickness. So the micro adjustment looks pretty capable. You rotate this guy and it kind of protrudes out this way so you can make fine adjustments. You know, when you get your setting, you use this jam nut, which by the way, that was the name of my band in high school. The manual mentions some kind of an indexing system where you could uh, get repeatable cuts of fixed lengths, right? So they have the spare parts bag and they say to use one of these and this knob, I don't know, I'm just gonna follow the instructions and see how this works. <laughs> All right, so check this out. I'm caught up now. So you basically put this little dovetail hoochie in there in the slot, bring this down. So now the center hole is open. These two outer holes, we have access to the little bolts that are in there, their little set screws. Now, here's the cool thing. I didn't even realize you got a little uh, hex head on that. And what that's gonna do is instead of going in the center here, let's assume the stop is in this position that we wanna be able to return to. We're gonna use this as a tool to tighten that little set screw on that side, tighten the set screw on the other side. Okay. And now that guy is locked in place. So anytime we want to return to this position, go right in line like that, and then we could take our thumb screw and fully lock us down into that position. And then, because they give you more of these dovetail wedges, you could use multiple of these across here if you have work pieces that uh, you need to return to a particular setting. That is cool. Of course, another use for these little uh, dovetail hooches here is you would be using those to secure a sacrificial fence. It does look like they do not provide the bolts for that, but you do at least have these little dovetail guys that you can use. All right, so first impressions, I'm a little bit giddy. There are features on this thing that I've never seen before, and I have to admit, I mean, when I opened it up and I started playing with this little dial over here, I just got excited. I'm geeky about this stuff. I enjoy cool creature comfort things like this. And for this price point, that's the reaction I expect to have. There are other gauges on the market that I've reviewed in the past that are approaching a similar price point, but they do not impress me in that same way. They don't get that sort of giddy, you know, new woodworker reaction out of me. This one does. But that is only first impressions. I haven't actually cut anything with this yet. So I don't think I need to spend months with a miter gauge to know what it can and can't do, but I certainly should spend a good deal of time making some cuts, checking the angles, and seeing if uh, the accuracy that this little dial provides actually can follow through. The Wood Whisperer Guild is an online school where you could take courses from some of the best instructors in the industry. I'm here to try to get you to build your first chair with as little pain as possible. And so this is really good technique learning about reference faces. If you're putting pressure on the bevel, you're going to cause problems and usually get that kind of vibration in the cut. I'll be trying out a couple new techniques, new to me. This plane doesn't flatten, this plane makes it pretty. This is a plane that flattens. Whether you're new to woodworking or you're just trying to step up your game, the Guild offers top-notch video instruction that will guide you through every step of the build. And if you have trouble, we won't leave you hanging since you can ask your instructor questions right on the website or discuss your project with your fellow Guild members in our various communities. With over 60 courses to choose from, you're sure to find something that piques your interest. The Wood Whisperer Guild, the next best thing to an in-person class. Whew, all right. So that was a surprise. 
Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty here, make sure you go back and check out the big review I did a couple years ago of like 10 different miter gauges on the market that kind of sets the groundwork for my methodology, what I'm looking at with miter gauges. I also did an updated review on the Woodpecker's Exact 90 and just recently the Harvey Compass the MG36 Pro. <laughs> is one that we just did recently. Watch those before this because it really does help you understand what I'm looking at, why I think certain features are valuable, and it goes into a little bit more depth. Okay, now, this guy. I have to say, overall, I'm impressed. The build quality is what you'd expect for a top dollar device. Everything about this gauge screams premium, much like other premium gauges on the market like the Harvey and the Jessam. Calibration is a breeze. The fence squareness is adjusted with a few bolts and the miter bar is easily adjusted by loosening and tightening a few screws. Both of these adjustments are very similar to my current favorite miter gauge, the Jessam Miter XL2. The fence extension system was a nice surprise and it goes to a full 37 and a half inches. And my favorite part is that the micro adjuster goes along for the ride. One of the very few things that I didn't like about the Jessam miter gauge is that the extension doesn't allow the micro adjustable stop to go along with it. So when you're using the extension, you have to use the little built-in stop that kind of slides in and out. The adjustable stop just can't attach to it. The fence has a dovetail slot instead of the T slot that we see in pretty much every other miter gauge on the market. The good thing is that you can use these nifty dovetail nut thingies that they include with the gauge. The bad thing is that you can't just use something like quarter 20 hardware to cobble together your own work holding solutions. But when I first saw that dovetail slot, my brain went right to micro jigs uh, dovetail shaped match fit clamps. If you could slide that in there, that might be pretty cool for some work holding applications. It does go in, but it kind of gets stuck once you get the full bar in there. So I suppose you could modify this thing if you wanted to, to get it to fit. But I think the easiest solution, if you really are into the match fit system, is to just make a sacrificial fence with the dovetail slot on it, no modification needed, and you get the sacrificial fence that you probably needed anyway. Now, the adjustable stop is a really nifty design. I really like how the double hinged arm can accommodate sacrificial fences of varying thicknesses while still allowing the stop to make full contact with the fence and the table surface. I should add that the Jessam does this too, but with a much simpler execution. The way saw stop accomplishes this with that double hinge is very cool, but it does come at a cost. The cost is deflection. The amount of deflection here exceeds just about any of the others that I tested in my big shootout review. So you're going to want to be gentle when positioning your work against this stop. Now the micro adjustment mechanism is capable but a little bit rudimentary. The threads are relatively coarse and have a resolution of 1 64th of an inch per tick. That may sound good, but in a market where Jessam resolves to about 2 thousandths per tick and Harvey is 1 thousandth, a 64th of an inch just seems like a lot. Now let's have a reality check here. I need to smack myself in the face a couple times. <laughs> The fact that I even said that 1 64th of an inch is not as good. The thing is, better is better, right? So some of these other companies do have better micro adjustable stops, but the reality is a 64th of an inch is plenty resolution for most of us, if not all of us. We're not building aerospace parts here, right? But other companies have done better. So my job, as I've mentioned in the past when I do reviews, is to be nitpicky, so let's pick. So I just referred to the micro adjustment as rudimentary. Here's what I mean. If I were to design a shop made jig with some kind of micro adjuster, here's what my little pea brain would do. I'd install a threaded insert into a fixed block and then use a flat headed bolt as the stop. Simply rotate the bolt in either direction and bam, micro adjust. But when it comes to a $450 miter gauge, I expect to see something a little bit more sophisticated than that, like we see with some of the competition. Others feature a stationary dial on one side and the stop moving on the other side. These systems also have a dial that has some built-in resistance, allowing it to hold its settings and any turns have to be very deliberate. The saw stop adjustment just feels a little clunky in comparison. Clunky, give me that clunky. It's also worth mentioning that in order to make adjustments, you'll likely need to flip the stop up so that you can see what you're doing. You can make your adjustment and then flip it back down. And I highly recommend that you do it that way, at least until you get used to this thing. It's gonna be pretty easy to forget which dial does what, considering that they look very similar and they're located very close to one another. Now, let's talk about the most interesting feature on this thing, the angle dial that makes me feel a little bit like Marty McFly. Rock and roll indeed, Marty. I mean, the ability to dial in a tenth of a degree with such accuracy and simplicity 
is pretty much unmatched. There are quite a few gauges on the market that will get you to a tenth degree, but you're doing it by eye with a vernier scale, not detents. The closest thing I know is the Incro 1000 HD, where it has a tooth for every single degree. But after that point, you're using the scale by eye to get to the tenths. Having perfectly repeatable tenth degree detents is just kind of mind boggling. So let's talk about a big negative here, the price. At $449, the Revolution costs more than a lot of people's table saws. It's $90 more than the Jessam, and anywhere from $90 to $150 more than the Harvey, depending on the way the wind is blowing that day. There are also perfectly capable miter gauges like some of the Incros that'll take you well under $200. All right, so let's wrap this up. I think I could say unequivocally that this is the most accurate angle finding miter gauge on the market. I don't think anything else out there even competes with the dial angle adjustment system here. So if the kind of work you do requires that you dial in your degree settings with this kind of accuracy, this miter gauge is going to be a game changer. And even if you're a relative dimensioning kind of woodworker, this dial system is like a giant micro adjuster, allowing you to dial in those times where you need just a hair more or just a hair less. But make no mistake, this gauge is gonna be overkill for most of us. Honestly, for myself, one degree resolution is perfectly fine, and when I need something between the ones, I usually have a vernier scale to find those tenth degrees should I ever need that. I mean, logically speaking, it's just not something that I need. But when have I ever let logic get in the way of my tool purchases? Love you, big boy. Now, I may have mentioned it before, but one of my disappointments here is that SawStop didn't take the opportunity to maybe use an alternative material for the fence, something non-conductive that won't set up the SawStop break. I mean, if you're thinking about the whole SawStop ecosystem, accessories for this tool, it would be very nice if they came with things that wouldn't set off the break. But then again, being a little bit cynical, the company does make a lot of money selling brakes, so uh, maybe this was intentional, who knows. Ultimately, the SawStop Revolution miter gauge is not something I would buy for myself just based on the feature set if a review wasn't involved. I mean, the most notable feature is one that I probably wouldn't use very often. But the fart in the elevator here is the stop. But the turd that just won't flush here is the stop. But the cock in the hen house here is the stop. So even though I wouldn't really get a whole lot of use out of that crazy accuracy for the miter angle, the thing I do rely on when it comes to micro adjustability is the stop. I really do like to get down to that thousandth or two thousandth adjustment because of the relative dimensioning method of sneaking up on a fit. And sometimes you just need that little bit more or a little bit less. And unfortunately, the saw stop micro adjustable stop is a bit of a step backwards from what I'm used to with the Jessam model. So I think I'm gonna put off my decision as to which one I'm gonna keep. I'm intrigued by this thing. I wanna spend more time with it and see how it hashes out over time, see how much I'm really bothered by that stop with the amount of play and the sort of rudimentary adjustability that it has. Uh, I just wanna see how it pans out over time and the money is already spent, so it is what it is. Hey, so future Mark jumping in here. I spent a little bit more time with this thing and regarding the deflection, I think I came up with a solution that's actually pretty cool using the stuff that they provide for us. So you know how I mentioned before that you can use this little knob and you could set these little dovetail nuts in here, put those in the track and you have multiple repeatable stop positions. Well, it kind of occurred to me that you can also use this to your advantage to stabilize this stop and basically turn it from this into zero deflection. So when we use these as intended as stops, you're gonna put the piece in and then you're gonna tighten it up in that location using the, uh, the little tool on the end here, right? And then you would put this guy in the middle to secure the whole thing. Well, why not leave this loose, right? So you can see that piece can move. I'm gonna take that thumb screw and engage with that little dovetail nut. All right, easier said than done. There we go. So now I'm engaging the threads at the center. These little set screws on the outside, we're disregarding those for the moment. And now I could loosen this up and move this wherever I want it to go. And it moves freely, no problems at all. So I can move into what position I want to be in, tighten this knob down, and then at the bottom, tighten this too. And now there is no deflection whatsoever. That is, you know, just went from being one of the sloppiest ones I've seen on the market to the strongest one. I've seen on the market. So that's quite impressive. Um, that's along the lines of what like Katz Moses does with his, where it's locked down so securely that you can, you know, smack a hammer into it and it's not gonna go anywhere. 
And this knob here doesn't really get in the way because we're referencing our work uh, here against the fence and hitting that stop. So I think if I'm using this thing, I'm just gonna roll pretty much like this. Keep that screw in there, keep that dovetail uh, connector thingy in there, and this guy's ready to go. It's just two things you tighten down when you have that setting. Hopefully, this review gives you guys enough information that if you're in the market for a new miter gauge and this one fits the bill, uh, whether it's going to be a good purchase for you. I think most people probably would not need to upgrade to something like this if you already have a decent miter gauge, but man, it's intriguing and it's great to see companies innovating and pushing the space to make better products, whether it's not for you. I mean, that's totally fine if you think this is a, a silly price point and a silly product, but I always want to applaud innovation and I want these companies to continue to compete to make better products that hopefully in the end result in cheaper prices or good features finding their way down into the less expensive models. And I'm genuinely curious, let me know in the comments if you do the kind of work that really requires this level of accuracy to that 10th degree where you can make use of those detents. I'm just curious what kind of stuff you make, let me know. So don't forget to check out my other miter gauge reviews including the big one I did a couple years ago and the updated version of the Harvey Compass Pro as well as that Woodpecker's 90 degree or exact 90, whatever they call it. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you wanna see me succeed here on YouTube. I'm kind of new, so I hope to do really well. All right, thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Okay, zippity ding dong. But the pubic hair in the pudding? <laughs> All right, never mind. That's, that one's not gonna go. Nicole will veto that one. Did come up with a way to get around this deflection issue.